How you All feeling, right. Marcus? Oh, man, man. Appreciate you having me on. Life yeah. is good. Just drop the kids off yeah, early. Yeah. I, I'm glad that you tapped in. Um, yeah. I'm, I, everybody's been waiting for you to stop in. I've been pretty much prompting them, prompting them about a little bit about who you were. You know, I know I can't explain you as well as you, um, but I did get an idea. Watched a couple of your interviews and, and seen a little bit about your life. So could you just tell the people who you are? Absolutely. My name is Marcus Head from Chicago. Shout out to Shy town It's cold out there right now. And um, started out as a stand-up comedian in Atlanta and just, man, really hustled and bustled. And I actually got my big break working for uh, Ron White. If anybody know who he is, the guy from the uh, Tater Salad, Mr. Uh, the blue uh, collar tour with uh, Billy Engvall, uh, Larry Cable Guy, and Jeff Foxworth. Mm. And man, he took me on the road with them. They had the highest grossing comedy tour, even higher than the Kings of Comedy. And we was in stadiums. I mean, we was uh, New York Stadium. We was at, I mean, we was in stadiums. Okay. So. And just look at all that equipment and like five, six cranes and all these people walking around with these walkie talkies, I just fell in love with mm -hmm. production, you know. Right, after right, right. Then I actually, uh, you know, kept doing my comedy. Then I actually started booking shows and comedy clubs. So let's say I was doing like holding walls comedy club for promoters, like in El Dorado, Arkansas, or Blyville, uh, Arkansas, or El Dorado, Texas. Uh -huh. And, you know, I ended up talking to some of the club owners to be like, hey, let me book your comedy night for you. So I started booking mm -hmm. comedy for clubs, for comedians. And that took me to another level because now I was booking headliners, you know, when I was just mm -hmm. featuring. So, you know, I worked a deal out say, hey, Rodney, you know, Rodney Perry, you know, I'll book you for this club. Come on through. Let me go on the road with you. You know, same thing with Shardy. And I just established a relationship with people that I wasn't ready for my time, but I mm -hmm. took the spotlight really started rolling with it then um had a child had my son and my wife gave me an ultimatum she said you got one year to make mm -hmm. this comedy work <laughs> or you go get a job so um it didn't work uh -huh. the way i wanted it so I up getting a job i hated it uh i was an instrument tech okay. at a hospital and yeah you know, i did that for a little bit but it was just in me man so I got back into the comedy, got divorced. Uh -oh. Sometimes it's <laughs> yeah, to go on divorced. the journey. Got to find another. Steve Harvey told me, he said, you got to drop people off to Amen. get where you got to go. And, um, you know, then just started, you know, doing my thing and I got back into it. And then okay. I stopped again. And I, you know, because like I said, I had to be on the road and I just had a kid. So... I wasn't about to sacrifice my son. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, you know, I wouldn't be there because my dad was there for me. So I ended up uh, getting into the hospitality business. And uh, anybody mm -hmm. that's in Atlanta that worked, uh, they used to go to TGI Fridays, probably know me. I used to be the manager at uh, the Camp Creek uh, mm -hmm. location. And I was at the um, the uh, South, what was that? Uh, the South, not South Creek, uh, over there on 75, the... Um, I forgot the area. Uh, that Friday was over there on 75, going over there by uh, 75 mm -hmm. South. Um, and I was at that one. Then I actually went to the airport. So I worked there for a while. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Uh, became a general manager at Steak and Shake and a regional manager at Steak and Shake. So I fell in love with organizing. But the main thing I really loved about working in as a manager and a regional manager, I love building relationships and I love coaching and developing young people mm -hmm. and old people, mm -hmm. older people. So at Steak and Shake, I had the 16-year-old that never had a job before to that lady named Flo that's been there 45 years and you mm -hmm. can't tell her nothing, you know. I had a range of people, organized mm -hmm. chaos, and then finally I put it all together. My wife and I was watching TV uh, a couple years ago and we couldn't find anything. And this is paying $19 for Netflix, uh, Amazon, all of it. We couldn't mm -hmm. find nothing to watch. And she and say, why don't you just write a damn movie? Mm -hmm. I was talking about it. Bro, I was writing the next day. End up writing, got my LLC. I learned how to direct, write 
from YouTube and Skillshare. Can, can we just so those are my right two there? professors. So you say your yeah. lady tapped you and said, brother, it's time to go. Now, what do you think your first wife would have told you? I'm not going to dog my Do you think she would have been as supportive? Do you think she would have pushed you? So we just got to no. you just got to point out the the importance of finding that right one for you because it seems like she's the one that prompted you. She, I, it, it seems like it was a healthy challenge. How about that? No, not only are you a podcast host, but you are a mini Doctor Phil. Look at you, jumping I'm in. just I'm just tapping <laughs> into what I see, which what I'm hearing in the circus. No, it's like it's true. this brother. Once you found that wind beneath your wing, as some would say. It seems like, okay, the challenge wasn't taken as an insult. It was taken as an action. It's like, okay, say less. And I know I got the support of you, so let me go to work. And I'm that is dope, bro. Especially to come. So did you have any pre-existing knowledge of how to write films? Or is this something you just said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Let's jump. I'll tell you this. Being a stand-up comedian, now I used to write. Uh, you know, I used to write jokes for comments. I used to write for uh, Tyler Craig at times and Dirty South, Lord rest both of their souls. And, you know, and then when I just was watching comedians, I would notice something I thought that could be funnier. So I pull them to the side and be like, hey, you know, do this, do this, do that. So, you know, just like uh, John Singleton was like one of my mentors. And I took like a workshop class from him. And, you know, he was reiterating what he told Ice Cube, if you can write a joke, I mean, if you can write a rap, you can write a, uh, a movie. And he said the same thing to me. If you can write a comic, you know, tale or a joke, then you, your story is right there. So, like I said, man, I just really, it's always been in me since I was mm -hmm. like 10 years old. I was writing gospel songs and everything else like that. So, you know, I really, really respected telling stories. You know, I'm a storyteller before I'm anything. You know, well, I'm, I'll take that back. I am a motivational mm -hmm. organizer before I'm anything, then a writer. And what was beautiful is, and I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you how God works. What's beautiful is everything connected. Let me go ahead and give you a quick recap. Y'all excuse my lazy eye. That lazy eye ain't just because it's in the morning. I just got a lazy eye. So, you know, keep, no keep on the screen. But, but let me show you how God works did the comedy, put together shows, went, worked as a manager, organizing, dealing with budgets and everything else. So all the seeds were being planted. As a manager, organizing, dealing with budgets and everything else. So all the seeds were being planted. So when I got sat down to put my production mm -hmm. together, write my film, I already had all those backgrounds. And the beauty of it is I had the talent because all those comedians, Rodney Perry, shout out to Damon Williams, shout out to Squirt, Shawty Shawty, um, Fredo uh, Davis, um, you know, uh, Kevin Hart Hunter, you, you know, yeah, that's Kevin Hart like, gave you a piece. He gave you a piece that took you far. Yeah. What, what did he tell you early on? Man, you've been doing your this research, bro. All yeah, right. They'll tell you. I, 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 okay. I'm, not just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tap in with you, see what's going on, bro. bro. No, okay. All right. So my first night, I did comedy with the Cognac Theater. Bruce Bruce put the mic in my hand. Shout out mm -hmm. to Bruce Bruce. And when I went up there and Ricky Harris, the late Ricky Harris, and when I, you know, at the time, it was my girlfriend. We went up to the stage and, you know, he called me up there and said, you know, it's her birthday. He said, come on up here. What'd you get her for your birthday? And, you know, mm -hmm. just joking around. So he was getting at me. So I went back at him and people was laughing and I felt that energy on stage. So a month later, I came back, performed. I did Fire Marshal Bill. And I used to do a Fire Fire Marshal Bill, bro. So I did a Fire Marshal Bill for about 10 minutes. And then I mm -hmm. got into my set and bombed. I mean, it was horrible <laughs> after I did mm -hmm. the Fire Marshal Bill. Not one left. So Not after one I got left. off after the fire marshal bill, it, they was holding them in. Right, they was gotta like, run it back. You gotta run it back. If it, I bet you it was that bad, it's probably funny now. What was the joke? <laughs> what was it? What was the joke? What was, oh, what was the joke was Bruce Bruce had on like this uh, old so school Bruce Bruce sweater. Bruce was the super big dude. And I, I, okay. 
Yeah, Bruce Bruce. Okay. Shout out to Bruce Bruce. He had this sweater on, and I started talking about him. Fly dude, and his though. Sweater. He was a fly dude. And he knew how to put it together. No, he was a fly dude. <laughs> but what? But a big man with a checkered uh -huh. sweater on. Just, it looked like the start of a race. It looked like the start of a race. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. You know, I told him, like, he, you know, belonged on uh -huh. Happy Days or something. I forgot what I said. But they didn't like it because they didn't uh -huh. know me. And that was lesson one on one. One, you don't dog uh -huh. out the host. And two, be yourself and stick with what you know. I should have just kept with that fire marshal mm. bill and just did that for a few more minutes mm. and get off stage. But I did that. And when I got off stage, it was so funny. Let me tell you the lineup on this mm. show when I was there. It was mm. Small Fry, Bruce Bruce, Ricky Harris, Ooh. Kevin Hart, um, a dude, I don't even know if he's still around, Chris Charles, Ooh. and Mike Epps. And, and, um, wow. more. So all of them was at the club that day. After I got off stage, Kevin Hart pulled me to the side. And he was like, man, you got it. You know, he said, you got that. What you did up there, that wasn't it. But you got it. You know what I mean? In other words, he gave me some encouraging words I'll never forget. And then I came back a month later. And I didn't kill it. But I held my own so I didn't get booed. And I got love after I got off stage. And then I just started... Man, I was like, I'm one of the original OGs back in the day, like Comiac Theater, uh, 559, um, you know, just the hole-in-the-wall clubs, you know, uh, and all the real comments that let you know about them hole-in-the-walls, you know. Uptown was the only club that was there, and I couldn't get on, mm -hmm. I couldn't get on stage because there were right, so right, many right. comics. So I went and opened up my own shows. I had the uh, Crow's Nest on Old National Highway for mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months. I opened up a uh, three dollar cash bucket. You know, a lot of people may may not know these areas, mm -hmm. but and what that gave me was stage time because I had my own place. And then all the you know all the comics and the headliners they wanted mm -hmm. to get paid, so they like who is this? You know, I went by the name of Marquise mm -hmm. Head. You know, back in the day, so they was like, who the hell is this Marquise dude getting these rooms and everything else? You know, because like I said, some of the comics knew me, but the headliners right. didn't know me, so. I started reaching out to them, booking them mm -hmm. for shows, and that gave me relationships with them. Now, fast forward and back to when I started writing and putting my movie together, the first people I called was Rodney. Now, actually, Little Duval was the person that I had in mind to do mm -hmm. the show. Now, when I started out, it was me, Little Duval, uh, Nancy Bellany, shout out to Nancy, uh, Squirt, um, T-Ray, shout out to T-Ray, um, Double D and uh, Mark Henderson, who went by Little Q, and I used to go back and forth to Chicago, uh, Little Rail, I mean, uh, Little mm -hmm. Rail as well. So, and Nard, who just passed, was always the host at Uptown Comedy Corner, which, like I said, was the only that's where mm -hmm. everybody was at. So, me and Nard developed a friendship, and he just kept putting me up, you know what I mean? He showed love, put me up, and everything else. and like I said, we was all up there begging, bro. I mean, me, me, little, little Duval, Mark Henderson. And then, so we about to get on stage. Next you know, Sherman mm. Golden walk up or Chris mm. Tucker walk up. So now our stage time is gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's why I developed my own little plug, my own mm. little thing. And like I said, it taught me two things. It taught me don't wait on nobody to create your mm. own platform. Also That's taught me is you can develop relationships with people that don't know you by just having good character. I paid everybody on time. I brought everybody in. Like I said, I had two, three rooms. Now, my boy Stacy Hall, shout out to Stacy, had like four or five rooms. And he showed me a lot of love and let me go on his shows. And Preacher Man, shout out to Preacher Man too. Like I said, a lot of these people from Atlanta know exactly mm. what I'm talking about with all these and they showed me love, developed. So I brought, you know, like I said, Little Duval was the first person I had in mind. And, you know, I couldn't really get him because he was on tour booking, you know, so I couldn't get him. So I reached out to a couple of people because I ran into Shadi mm -hmm. 20 years ago. And Shadi used to, when I first met Shadi, he was cursing every word was a curse word. He was raunchy and everything, just everything. Just, and it was so funny when we first met. 
I did. I was at a show. He was the host. And I came in there, did my thing. You know, I was all right. And I saw him later, and he said, hey, man, you Marquise. I was like, yeah. He said, I heard about you. He said, I heard that you got a license, and you funny, and you could do white and black mm. clubs. Because back in the day, comics, they had no license. So they needed somebody that can drive them mm. to this show. Mm. Like, Tyler, Smokey D's. I got on the road with all of them because I had a license and I could mm. do both rooms. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I developed a relationship. So, you know, me and Shardy actually we didn't work together. Cause we were supposed to do the stardom. And we end up didn't working because I, I ended up getting a comedy house theater, which was the blessing for me, because that's when I met Ron White that really took mm. me under his wing. And I just like said, all right. So fast forward twenty years later. I ain't talked to Shorty, you know, in mm -hmm. years. But I noticed that he was on the uh, morning show with Young Go John. The morning show, too. Super and dope. Yeah. Bro, number that one. That's the number one rated morning show from 18 to 35 to 10. in that graphic. To and 10 that's over, number one. Yep. That's over Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, and Headcraft. Big, up, big, up, Head up, big up to Young Jock. Big up to Shorty. Big up to ATL. Shorty. Big up. Well, let me. Let me give you a little nugget a lot of people don't know. The show that Young Jock and Shoddy have is owned by Mr. Haygood. And if that name sounds familiar, Mr. Haygood is the dude that created the mm. Breakfast Club. And he, you know, he parted ways with them, mm -hmm. but he built up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't. So, one thing about creators, man, once you uh, have that ability, which, I, which I'm impressed by you, is when you can create. That's it. You're, you're unstoppable. You know, you, you you know, you know, like I know you can you can create something overnight and where other people talent. Talent finds a way to get True. discovered, you know, but the biggest thing about being a director, for anybody that wants to be a director, get into acting or anything. Let me give you a little tidbit. The biggest thing that you can have, two biggest things you can have is imagination and confidence. If you have those two things as an entertainer, just in life, period. And, of course, people that surround yourself or people in your circle that are positive, that's moving the needle, and that support you. That's can I, I pick you back and throw one in there for you? Consistency. You need consistency. I'm I don't care what you do. Hard work. If you're not going to yeah. show up and it's going to be consistent, I don't care how good you are. I mean, I've seen some of the most talented people lose their spot just because they weren't consistent so you see this you see this yes, dude sir. behind me this dude is laughing and this dude hey, is man. winning <laughs> uh, big time and let me tell you something so god has blessed me to where like i said we you know puts can't get right together and i went through it bro now because this was my first, you know, I've been on sets and I've, you know, I've been in the business and everything else. But this is my first production under my name, my money, my, mm. my, my thing. So I learned a lot of life lessons about it. The first thing I learned is pre-production is all that. Any filmmaker out there that is trying to put together, or if you know someone's trying to put together a production of film, tell them to make sure they have money for their pre, uh, for their, um, Post-production. Post-production is when mm -hmm. you finish the film and basically you put your music in, you cut all your scenes, put it all together, you do the mm -hmm. color grading, and you go ahead and move forward to the next phase of mm -hmm. distribution. Distribution is getting your film on a platform, a streaming platform, because the movie industry is far unless you Top Gun or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, it's, it's all about the mm -hmm. streaming platform. So... God has blessed me, bro, to where when we first shot the film, the first seven days, mm. we ran out of money. Because seven days. The, How long? What was, what was the, uh, during uh, pre-filming, uh, pre right? What was your expectation time frame? What did you think? Uh, what, we, we did this film during mm. the pandemic when all the kids was in, mm. out of school, mm -hmm. at home, and it was crazy. You know, because I got my kids at home, a five, uh, a five-year-old at the time, a three-year-old and a um, mm. eight-year-old. 
My wife mm. works from home. You know, she's executive works from home. So we all online. Mm. Everybody's online. My world. Okay? It's my world, brother. And, Same world. Mm. Man, so I'm in meetings. Like, uh, shout out to Montel Jordan, oh, who's producer Montel. on the film. And he also uh, gave me three songs on there. And he also gave me a song with him and Lecrae. Lecrae, big and, up. Uh, Lecrae. I got a Rick Ross. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, I got a Rick on the uh, sound I mean, on the uh, mm. film as well. And KJ Rose, who's out in California, and her name is uh, KJ Effect. And she uh, is like Little Nas's like, motivational speaker. You know, she got Little Nas on track when he went through his little thing. And she has a book. I mean, she's doing her thing. She was on um, the, uh, what's that name of the one where they pressed the button? The, uh, the Voice. She was Jennifer, when Jennifer Hudson was on there, she was Jennifer Hudson's life coach, you know, that mm -hmm. whole thing. So she blessed me with a song. We went to high school together. So she let me have a song on there. And we just all put it together. But first seven days, I had an investor that pulled out on me three days while we was in mm. the middle of filming. Now, that's my fault because I didn't have all the money in the bank. They told me they was going to have it months ago, weeks ago. And then it came. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. And they showed me receipts showing that, you know, they was waiting on something. Never came. So... The day before, I didn't have any money. So I'm shooting a film trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to pay these people. Because these people told me, so I ended up, my PA, my um, uh, my um, director assistant, you know, who's, you know, right under me, uh, helped me out. So shout out to my director assistant, Shaky Webster. I can't, mm -hmm. I'm no, I appreciate real. that. Because that, that's the only way to come up. Uh, real. So her, her husband, bro, I got stories mm -hmm. on top of story. So her, her and her husband, Walter, and, you know, helped me out to pay the cast. So we, so we, so the, uh, so the production. So all the production team got paid. Mm -hmm. Cast didn't get paid. The beauty of it, though, and it's a silver lining, is I kept it 100 with the whole cast. And what was beauty is I've always taken care of the cast because all of them were my friends that I had on the road. So I was like, look, I don't have it, but I'm going to get it. And you know what? Not one person gave me any problems, any static, because mm. they trusted me. The speed of trust. Two I was months just later. We were just talking about this, brother. So they, no way, this yeah, is my yeah. brother, Big. It's a pattern, right? Now, this is what we were just talking about. So we were talking about why black people don't shop with black people more often. And everybody was coming up with these various ideas. But I said it's the, it's the lack of trust. You understand? In business, if I trust someone, right? That's it. The second you tell me, give me two weeks, you got it. If I don't trust you, now I gotta, I gotta quantify if I, if I should trust you. I gotta check on you. I gotta put eyes on you. I'm worried about it. You understand? And the speed just slows down tremendously. Like you just said, just by you being able to go to those people because you built rapport, you had that trust. You go back to them and say, listen, I need a couple weeks, so I need a couple months. And everybody was understanding because you had that trust. The speed of trust. You can't beat it. You cannot beat it. Man. And <clears throat> so everybody, like I said, the the uh, my reputation stays solid. You know, like I said, not one person did I hear mm. anything negative. And I paid, you know, I paid everybody, okay? And after we finished that first phase, I went to get some more money. And I end up getting it. And thanks, shout out to Montel, because Montel Jordan helped me in that second phase to get mm -hmm. what I need. So, you know, we talked. Never met him before. Never met him before. Never knew him. And, you know, he ended up, him and his wife, Kristen, you know, showed love. And, you know, and then I had a couple other investors. So we went back, shot another seven, eight days, finished up the film. Then... We had to, I had a nightmare with my editor. My editor was my gaffer. And what people don't know what a gaffer is, the person that does all the lighting for your mm -hmm. um, set. So he was there on set. We agreed on a number. I couldn't reach the number because I was strapped. So I said, all right, let's do this. Now, I gave him some money up front to start. And I say, when this money run out, don't do anything. Pause the brakes. I'm going to get you some more money. When I couldn't get the money, and this is what I was saying about post-production and knowing just the, the, the nightmare of it. 
Uh, I had a trailer that was up for the film. He created the trailer. I paid him for the trailer. After I told him I couldn't pay him the amount we agreed on. Now, we didn't sign a contract yet. So both of us learned a lesson. I gave him money up front, which I shouldn't have done without a contract. And he accepted it and started the work without mm. a contract. So I told, you know, he did up to four weeks, something like that. And I told him, I'll get some more money. When I couldn't get the money, I came to him real and said, look, I don't have the money. So can we agree on a lower number or give me some time and I'll get it for you? And he said, well, I know already, you know, finished half of it. And I said, well, I didn't tell you mm -hmm. to do that. So he's like, well, I was like, well, that's just part ways. I did pay you for your time. You went over your time. That was on you because mm -hmm. I told you not to do it. So he said, yeah, you can get it back. You know, you can get your files back, but it's going to cost you some money. So <laughs> you told your files in the houses. Put the joints. So, yeah. So he basically, he, and that, bro, that happens a oh, lot in this oh, business. Uh, Put him on that. So yeah, so he basically, he, and that, bro, that happens a oh, lot in this oh, business. Man. Not only in music as well. When you have like a um, producer that has the beats and the music mm -hmm. and everything else, when the track is not finished yet, they won't. You know, they they just keep that, and the artist mm -hmm. never sees it. That goes a lot on in the business. So to make a long story short, he pulled my trailer without even telling me. So I put a trailer out. I'm telling everybody this is the movie. Everything else. Montel Jordan and all other people calls me and is like, hey, bro, I'm, you know, I was talking to some of my people and they told me that the trailer's not up. So I went, checked, and saw it wasn't there. You know how embarrassing that is to have a big name like that reach out to me and be like, hey, where's the trailer? So I called my man back. I'm not going to mention his name. And, you know, he's like, well, you got to give me X amount of dollars because I put my, um, you know, he said he put all his stuff, encrypted all his stuff on the film. So I was like, just give me my stuff back. You can keep your stuff. So he told me it was going to be X amount of dollars trying to make up for me mm. to get it back. I did something that was smart. Now, some, you know, like I said, I struggled and I did a lot of things. But one thing I did learn is when you, fin when you do a movie, make sure you have your copies and your files. He didn't mm. think I had that. I had my AD who... Um, he had one of my files, and then I had somebody else had another one of my files, and then I had one. So we pieced all mm. of them together, and then I went and got mm. another editor. And I told him, basically, he can kick rocks. Now, what's funny is him and I actually have a relationship now, mm. still, but I'm not going to get what he did. Mm. You know what I mean? So we ended up getting with the editor. So shout out to Blake Magic, who uh, finished it up, um, finished it up, editing. and shout out to my girl, Amy from Amy World Entertainment, who introduced me to him. And we ended up getting it across the finish line. But it was a struggle, and it was a lot. But we got it done. And after all that, bro, I'm talking about over and over, you know, piece in this, getting the money here, getting the money there. Shout out to my wife, because she came up and was like, all right. And this is how I say how important it is to have somebody back mm -hmm. you or follow you. My wife and I, we dipped into some savings that we didn't want to dip into mm -hmm. for this project. And, you know, I didn't want to do that, but we did it and we got it done. So I end up going with Homestead Entertainment. Shout out to Homestead Entertainment. And we are going to be on a few things, um, Tubi uh, and a couple other things late December, early January. We will be on the platform, the okay. streaming platform. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. Dope. And so Can't Get Right is, is in the bank. It's done. We're going to still have a premiere. I live in Florida, but I'm actually about to move to Atlanta. I'm selling my house here in Florida. So I'm actually moving to Atlanta uh, in the, uh, you know, first of the year, hopefully by February. And I partnered up with a guy, uh, uh, Atlanta Picture Studio. And um, wait, you, what, what, in where, where do you live? But I've, I've done business Jersey, in Atlanta. Okay. I actually uh, worked with um, Ian Burke at Iconic Studio, Studios. So. Uh, with a previous client. So I, I was just recently in Atlanta. So I, I know Atlanta, you, they got it going on there. 
Um, I just had a, I had a bro yeah. just walk in the yeah. building, and I don't know if he's still casting. Um, his name is John. He's recently out of the military, and we're appreciative of his service. Um, he he's one of those guys that commands a lot of attention from the ladies. So if you're looking for somebody like that, uh, I'm always looking for talent, bro. We're shooting actually in Atlanta, December nineteenth, twentieth, and twenty first. I have a okay. new project out, and um, the project is called Live and in Color. Very similar to uh, Saturday Night Live, In Living Color, um, uh, Chappelle Show, Improv, mm -hmm. Sketch Comedy. Uh, it's got the homie Rodney Perry. It's got Coco Brown. It's got uh, Marvin Hunter, Jesse McDonald. Um, we got a girl named Madam Boss, Leon Rogers out in Chicago, who's on the biggest radio station in the country, WGCI mm -hmm. in Chicago, which uh, Steve Harvey oh. came from, and Shawty Shawty. So... Um, we're filming. We actually filmed forty-five sketches mm. already, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do an additional uh, fifteen. Now, it's pretty funny, man. And I'm not saying it because I did it. It's it's something that's needed. It's not just a crack crack joke joke show. Basically, a lot of people call it an improv mm. Cosby show, to where we're gonna entertain you, but there are gonna be mm. some messages. And what I'm really excited about is we have a lot of uh, scenes where we have a therapist, Dr. Sabrina. Shout out to Dr. Sabrina Jackson. And basically, she's giving therapy, and she's a real clinical therapist. So she's giving um, therapy to people in real situations. But it's hilarious. So we got a pimp on there. Uh, shout out to Starmar Mitchell. He's a pimp. And because of the prices and economy, he can't you know, afford his Cadillac no more. So he pimping on uh, 10 speed bike. So, and therapy because he's depressed and he can't keep up with his women because he said they got strong leg muscles, so he can't catch up with them on his 10 speed uh, bike. You know what I mean? So, counseling him. We got little people, too. I, I don't know what the word you call little people. Uh, I just say little people. Uh, but shout out to Bria Green, who's on the show. And um, she and her boyfriend, uh, Harrison Floyd, shout out to him. He's actually in the film Can't Get Right as Deacon Cop. And they show about how he don't want to be with her no more because she he don't want to be with no small person no more. He want a big woman. So they ain't counselor. Uh, we got another counseling. This dude, uh, R. Drizzle. Shout mm -hmm. out to R. Drizzle. Uh, I saw him a few minutes ago. Uh, all he do is tell lies to his girl, Rantasia, Rantasia Mitchell. And I used to do a thing in uh, on comedy. I used to go stop telling stories, and I used to talk about all the things that we all talk. About. So he's on there, but. At the end, Dr. Sabrina, who's Dr. Hershey on the um, therapy session, at the end, she's going to give words of wisdom about bullying, uh, parenting, um, suicide, just stuff in the community as not only people, but mainly black people, we need mm. to hear. So she's going to break that down. And the networks love it when you are, you know, you, you're doing your thing, being funny, but you're giving, delivering positive messages and you're you know, giving words mm -hmm. to the people. And we also have, you know how they had uh, the fly girls mm -hmm. in, in Living Color? So what we're going to do instead of that is we're going to feature independent artist mm -hmm. videos between breaks. That gives them a chance to get their names out there. Also, mm -hmm. it gives us good marketing because, you know, if it, say any of them songs hit it, somebody from Taco Bell or AT&T like the jingle, mm -hmm. like the person, you know, then they can, that's how you get discovered, you know, just get it out there. So, um, like I said, we're finishing up those scenes. I'm not going to give away too much, but we do have a trailer that will be coming out. So anybody that's on here right now, please follow me at M Head Filmmaker, if you haven't already. Also follow me on um, N, the letter N, color, and prop show. Just go to my Instagram on um, Eric, and you, you see everything. Do me a favor and, and, and write those both down for, for, for the audience and I'll pin those. Yeah, so, I got you. Yeah. No, no don't yeah. worry about it. I got somebody in there that, that's going to take care of it for you. Okay. In color, improv show. Thank you, sir. And, and then something else we're going to talk about in a second, I'm sure, my podcast. I have a podcast called Good Head Podcast. <laughs> yeah, show. I think so. I think that's what he now said. Now you have to put I think show. that's what he said. Um, I think that's a marvelous idea. I was, I, I've been entertaining trying to use the Bible to deliver messages. So use biblical stories that have been transitioned into today's 
uh, Tom, so people can understand them. So kind of, I think you're t tapping on something similar, and I think that's super dope. I think there's a lot of different messages that need to get across. I, I love to laugh, too. Everybody tell you I, I, I goof around a lot, but I also understand the importance of us getting to where we're trying to go. You understand? Um, let me ask you a question before we – I had a, I got a couple questions, and I only got a few more minutes. So yeah, bro. can't get right. Is there still a way for, for, for the audience to see it? Because I've been promoting this film for a couple of days. I've gotten a lot of different people trying to figure out how they can go and watch it. Um, I know you did a premiere back in what? April. Um, um, right. And I, I think it was super dope. I love the way you um, distributed it. Um, it was ingenious. Um, now, how are we still able to watch it if possible? Well, right now, because we did what we call, what you was mentioned was self-distribution. And basically what that was, and that was a whole, oh, man, I didn't got the strength and the engine to tell you about that. But I'm going to give you a quick thing about that because I want people to, to know about this business. So basically, when we finished, I said, all right, now we got to get it on the platform. So I'm shopping around. And I'm, you know, reaching out to BET, TV1, TBS, you know, everything. And at the time, the film wasn't, shot the way I feel deserved to be on mm -hmm. those platforms. Mm -hmm. So we went and re-edited some things. We color graded some things and we, you know, fixed the sound. We had to do some voiceovers because we did some scenes outside. Uh, like when you, um, the people that have seen the trailer, well, this, I have a different trailer. So uh, there's an outside scene we did. We had to redo the whole thing. So I had to come back from Florida, back to Atlanta to reshoot all that with like four mm -hmm. different people. So put all that in to where I believe now the film is mm. really solid. So since we just got distribution with Homestead Entertainment, you know, we have have a, uh, you know, that's the distribution that we're with now. So we pulled our project down. So you can't see it anywhere. But like I said, we're going to have it promoted uh, when it comes up in uh, December. And like I say, now you can sit down on your couch because we had a link. We were supposed to have it on um What's you call it? Um, fight and root and everything. We never got. It never. It never worked. We no. They they could not connect it because what we we're doing was we wasn't on their site. We was using them as right, a right. Ga gateway. So basically, fire stick. A lot of people don't realize this. Something I wanted to do is where I wanted to create a firewall to where we all you have to do is go to those sites. Put the name can't get right in in the search box and then we would come up because we created our own page our own network but they said that there was an issue with the connection i think they just didn't want to do that because you know they wasn't getting what they wanted you know what i mean so what created a link for people to go watch it we charged nine dollars and actually we had a good following so we took it down a couple oh, of weeks man. ago actually yeah. it'll be back up you can watch it on all these platforms. And I'm going to promote, and, you know, if you invite More me back welcome. before we, um, out, you know, I'm going to let you people know when and where and everything else. And then, like I say, now we have it to where you can sit down on your couch and watch it on Tubi. Uh, and like I say, I will find out by the 15th all the platforms okay. I'm going to be on uh, by then. And then I can definitely let people know. But now we have it set up. Now people can sit down. Because I always said I wanted my parents to be able to sit down and watch my film on their couch. That was my goal. So I made four promises to my investors and to people. Um, shout out to Homer Floss, the high school I went to. Because I got a, a lot of people I went to high school with, bro, that gave me $150, $200, $250 donations for the mm -hmm. film. So my locker room, Teresina Harvey. I know, don't nobody know who she is, but that is my girl. She was my first investor. She gave me $500 mm. to get started. Sure. So building relationships and keeping good relationships with people 30 years ago, mm. it's important. You never know how it's going to land. Speak so... Over. We, you know, like I said, we're gonna be on the streaming platform. Um, mm. You and I talk off the air about because I want to support. You know, I want to support people. Anybody that has music, get at me. 
Oh, I got a brother. Let me, tell you Let me tell you something. I got a brother that can literally produce music for any any need that you can imagine. Rock music, hip hop music, R and B music, old music, um, soulful. Um, he is a, he is extremely tapped in musically. His challenge is he's not big into the business, so I'm sure if he can kind of uh, work with somebody who would have a lot of different projects that he can grow with, it would be, yeah. I got a lot, bro. Oh, you, you have music, music bro. And you got plenty me. of music. That's one thing we got a lot. I got a lot of dynamic talent around me, wow. and to be to say the least, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of strong people around me. Um, now, before I let you go, I want to take the, I want to take this a little different. Okay, I want to ask you a question. You'll probably right. never be asked. Okay, how about that? All right, I'm gonna listen. All right, I'm listening. Oh, shout out to my podcast, oh. Good Head Podcast Show. Um, we have uh, this week we have uh, Dante Young. He goes by D Young. He's like a sketch comedy king. He puts everything on. Last week we had Haywood Nelson from uh, What's Happening, Mr. Hey Hey Hey. We had Men at Large for that. Dr. Sabrina. We had uh, Shardy Shardy. We got Montel Jordan coming up. Uh, Coco Brown, Rodney Perry. Um, and I'm working right now from a character on the Canaan movie, um, mm -hmm. the Canaan mm -hmm. show. Uh, is named that because we're in negotiations, but we're about to get him oh. as well. Oh yeah, and my and my homegirl T down down below, she has music too. So yeah, we'll tap we'll tap him in with the music. Um, so I, I, I got a question for you. All right, hold on one second. So, if you could have Denzel, Sidney Poitier, and Tyler Perry in one room for two hours, mm -hmm. what would you talk about? Mm -hmm. What would you want to know? You got the honest truth, bro? You talking about what? And I'm not trying to sound conceited. I'm not trying to sound arrogant. But, of course, I'm going to pick their brains. The first thing I'm going to ask them is, how have they sustained their careers? Take all the money out. Take How have you sustained the hunger and the love for the craft? That would be my first question. And when I read I say I'm not arrogant conceited because I feel like I – can sit at that table. I can't eat with them at that table. I'm going to sit at the kids' mm -hmm. table. But I'm going to be able to sit at a table because that's how much confidence I have in what I'm doing. And my right now, my writing skills, bro, I can sit at that table with them. That's how I, I can sit at the table as far as a writer. Now, as far as the directing and everything else, yeah, I'm nowhere close to it. But that would be my first thing. Um, my second thing is I would just sit back and shut my mouth mm. and let them talk. You know, what I mean? where like I said, just and learn because I talk a lot, but mm -hmm. I listen too. And my grandmother always told me, well, my mom told me, if you don't talk, people never know what you have to say. And my grandma, sometimes you just got to sit back and be the quiet person in the room because the quieter person in the room is the one making the mm. most noise. I didn't understand what that meant at the time, but now I understand when you're in a room with executives like I was when I was in Steak and uh, TJ Fridays, and then when I was in meetings and things like that, you learn. I learned from everybody, bro. I learned from the dishwasher. I learned from, I had this dishwasher at Steak and Shake. I used to work at Houston's as well, and a uh, restaurant, I real nice Houston's. restaurant. I love the, 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 the cowboy ribeye. They, they have a wine ribeye, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the wine ribeye. That was the dishwasher. He showed up to work every day, bro. Dishwasher now. Clean, dressed. He took pride in his dishes. He took pride in making them dishes clean. And he was ex, uh, you know, he was an ex-con. But he had the um, chance to make a second life for himself. So he showed up on time. He showed up dressed. Bro, he was dressed better than the managers mm -hmm. and the servers. And he had Clean, and he always had a smile on his face. And what I took out of that is he took pride in what he was doing. It doesn't matter what it was. He was happy for that second opportunity that he mm -hmm. got in life. And I, that is never take for granted what you have. So when I'm on set, I'm always asking for, you know, um, from my camera guy to my lighting guy to my actors, you know, what would you like to do to make this like better? This. 
It's your people. <laughs> you know? It's your people. Shout out Dirty South. We, you see that part mm -hmm. right there with Dirty South? We couldn't even get that part because my sound guy didn't press play. He had one job to do, and he didn't press play for that cut. recording. You get we got cut right now? <laughs> Now, we did a direct okay. cut already, but what I'm going to do is do a voiceover, because we're going to do a Can't Get okay. Right 2 spinoff. I'm part that we of her, because she just passed, and that was my best friend. I've known Dirty South for 25 okay. years. And I didn't know Ooh. Dirty South. Dirty South, a lot. I got her to do 15 minutes without cursing. And she was drunk. She mm. was tipsy, okay? I was off the chain. But she did her thing. So we're going to do a voiceover because I want to put that in the film, but we couldn't put it because, like I said, we didn't have the money to redo voiceovers for everything. So something had to be cut. You make a lot of tough decisions when you're a director and when you're an executive producer about what's going to make it, what's not going to make it. Uh, man, I went and did a city, six city tour promoting my film in Chicago, Indiana, Detroit, um, Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida. You know what I mean? So, it's a lot of hard work, but it's all coming to fruition. And I'm meeting a lot of um, connected mm -hmm. people. And like I said, another film that uh, it's like that 50 stuff, like um, In Too Deep, Donnie Brasco, um, uh, mm -hmm. Deep Cover. It's a film about a female playing the undercover, trying to bring the bad guy down. So, you know, I'm in um, right now, Jamal uh, Woolard. Uh, you know, we in talks with him, uh, the guy that plays mm -hmm. the original Biggie, uh, and talks with him about uh, putting all that together. So shout out to Jamal Woolard. And uh, man, like I said, I love telling stories. I love organizing, putting stuff together, and I love motivating people. Three of my people on my original Can't Get Right is on Tyler Perry. I'm getting right know what Bob. I get Four from my uh, Robert Townsend. Yeah. That was my. That is the reason why I got into films, bro. When I watched the five heartbeats, yeah, that I, made I'm me want that to. I'm getting that vibe from you. I'm getting the vibe of the the man that's saying I want to try it my own way um, before I try it their way, and that's dope, bro. Don't be afraid. Just continue on. I, I, I'm. I'm. We're paying attention. We're all gonna be tapped in. Um, hey, I'm fifty, bro. I'm at the age now where I really don't give a damn bro, what people bro, think. I'm gonna. Never say your age again, brother. You're youthful, man. So just continue on, you know? Because I can't even... You feel 50? Oh, yeah, okay, that's what I'm saying. I would have never, never suspected, bro. You understand? Hey, I, just let people know, it's not about the numbers. It's about how you take care of yourself. I eat right. Uh, like I said, I'm not the most religious person, but I know my Bible, and I will sit down and get on my knees every day and pray, even... Even if I'm driving down the street, bro, I'm just thanking God for the blessings and just everything, Same man. Way, just I, like exalt a, father, I exalt the yeah. Father in everything I do. You understand? Everything. I take a very um, unorthodox approach to trying to bring him into other people's lives. But nevertheless, it's my journey. It's my path. And I, I see you're on a similar journey. Um, please continue to do what you've been doing. I did have, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you, I heard mention of a film you were doing something with outer space or and yeah but I can't really give it all away but it's that next sci-fi okay. project. Just imagine Fast and Furious and Armageddon. Okay. It's going to be that type of that fancy spaceships like they had fancy cars. We uh creating a video game. I heard about that. And we also creating a uh, toy um you know with the aliens it's going to be aliens and and aliens and everything else. So I can't really give it away, but I will give you All that. Right. Um, and, be, and before I get out of here, two things. Um, the video you have behind you, the trailer, that song, I wrote that song. And um, so anybody get a chance, check out the trailer. But I, that's my song I wrote. And shout out to uh, Truman, um, who uh, did the lyrics and everything else. Truman, who did the lyrics. Uh, I don't know his Instagram handle, but Shout out to him. And um, I, I love to write music. I love to write songs. I love to write films. But like I said, I just love to write and just use my imagination. Can't nobody ever take your imagination from you. Now, you said you had a question for me that nobody was going to ask. Asked. What was it? It was the one about Denzel, Sidney Poitier. And, uh, <laughs> I... That's a good question. Like I said, I would just sit 
sit there, listen, but I wouldn't feel that I have to sit under the table because I feel like I belong, you know? And I know people, you only did a movie and two movies. I've been around, bro. And that's that confidence of knowing if you sit and act like you have to ask for permission mm -hmm. for something, then you're not seen. If you feel like you can be, and you can call it arrogant, you can call it whatever you want, bro. But when you believe in yourself and you believe in what you're doing, people are going to see that and people going to want to work with you. Well, I appreciate you tapping in. Um, it was an amazing interview. I'm hoping that you do uh, return and, and let us know when uh, Can't Get Right is, we, I guess, what's that, a re-premiere at that point? That's what you're going to be doing, right? So, Alana, we're going to do a, a premiere and everything else. I didn't want to do a premiere until we actually had it on the platform okay. so we can actually show it and then people, you know, could see it. That way we can get more buzz. We would love about, to probably do like a you know, I don't, watch party here. Um, if you, you know, do something where we're all in, involved, you know? Yeah, definitely do that. But the music, bro, I got anybody you. I'm, I'm going to tap in with you. I'm going to tap in with you. I'm going to put him on the line hey. with you. And... You can you can see what you want to move with next. I'm telling you, it's the the ar archive. Hey, first of all, shout out to you, bro, because you did your homework. You know your stuff. Real calm, collective. You asked some good questions. So shout out to you because a lot of people they don't know how to interview right. people. You know, they just go ahead and let people take over. But you control the interview because, like I said, I I I bro, I talk all day. But you, you know, you talk when you need to talk, and you pretty much quiet me when I need to be quiet to get your questions in. So that's a true professional. No, bro, so shout out to you too, bro. because it could be the opposite. You might, you could come up here and have nothing to say, and I would have to. So I appreciate you having plenty, of, plenty of experiences to share with the people. How about that? And we're Absolutely, gonna tap in bro. again. Much and, love. Um, feel free to stop by, man. We're always doing something here. Uh, we try and keep it pretty positive. Do things go awry from time to time? But for the most part. We're always talking about God, investing, relationships, um, thinking about the industry. We got a lot of people that's the entertainment around us. So, you know, please stay tapped. Oh, bro, I'm, I'm going to have you on the podcast, bro. I'm going to have you on the podcast. When you show I, love, I, would, I show that love. I would love, love to do it, bro. Love to do it. All right. Absolutely. So for Absolutely. everybody else. All right, brother. I appreciate y'all all for tapping in. I'm going to get off a little early. I'll be back on later on. Um, Thank y'all all for sharing the live, keeping the numbers up all morning. Um, I appreciate y'all. Much love, Swaziland, to all the citizens. I love you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Marcus Head, for stopping through. God bless everybody that's working with you. God bless your family. And please continue on your journey, sir. We are watching and we are impressed. Thank you.